G'day and welcome back to my shop. Today we're going to be talking about electrodes. No, not that sort of electrode. We're talking about this type here. What I want to do is to manufacture a set of electrodes uh, which have a groove across the end uh, and the idea of this is that we'll be able to weld together round rod or round bar and we can do that by inserting the bar into this half round groove. I also want to try making a set of electrodes like this type here which are cranked electrodes. I believe that the correct engineering term is called a joggle. Look it up. Um, the process or the reason why I want to do this is that the spot welder I have at present has this type of copper arm. It has an electrode which is fitted into a uh, slotted uh, end on the electrode arm and it's held in place by a clamp bolt. The problem with that is that uh, there's a fair amount of offset between the uh, center line of the electrode and the end of the arm. In this case it's about 12 millimeters. The problem with that is that, so I'll just turn this over, if you're trying to weld very close to a uh, face or a standing seam, it's just simply not possible to get the electrode up close to that surface. So it becomes a bit problematic. So what I'd like to do is to make this offset or cranked uh, electrode. I'm going to have a go at doing that, probably not in this video, probably in the next one. I've got some of this 8mm copper bar and I'm going to have a go at annealing that and then I'm going to try to make the bends using my milling machine which has a DRO set up or the lathe also fitted with a DRO and the idea is to use the, the movement of the vise or the, the collet or whatever it is I'm using to hold the material by a precise amount. In this case I want to get 9.64 millimeters or thereabouts between the center lines. And using the DRO setup I can do that with a, a fair amount of repeat, repeatability. And I want to have obviously two of these electrodes and I want them to be as close as possible to being the same form. So I'm hoping that uh, using this sort of a CNC-ish type process will allow me to get that repeatability. Anyway, let's, let's have a look at this little baby here. Um, I'm going to head over to the lathe and although I've already made this set, uh, it has a 3mm groove across the face of the electrode. I'm going to have a go at doing a, a set with a 5mm or a 2.5mm radius groove across the end for thicker material. So let's go to the lathe and see what happens. Okay, so what I've got is I've mounted the 8mm copper rod in the 3-jaw chuck. To cross drill I'm going to use this setup that I developed uh, a number of years ago. I actually saw this in the Model Engineer magazine and it comprises a, an aluminium casting which is bolted down to the compound slide. There's a split collar which can be tightened up with an 8mm cap screw and this is just an old AEG two-speed electric drill. Uh, I did have a more modern drill with a variable speed but the only problem was this whole gear assembly at the front of the casing was made of plastic and it just simply wasn't rigid enough. This setup when it's bolted down is extremely rigid and you can be sure that the center line of the, the drill axis is directly in line with the lathe axis. When I made the casting I did all the machining, bolted it down to the compound slide, turned the compound slide through 90 degrees and then I line bored the, the bore in the casting so I could be sure that it did line up exactly with the center line of the lathe. I've actually got two of these. Uh, the second one uh, bolts at right angles to the compound slide the way it's set up at the present moment. This one's just fabricated from steel. Once again it was line bored at the same time and this one allows you to turn the drill at 90 degrees and drill holes in the, the face of a piece of material that's gripped in the three-door chuck. Uh, it, I can actually turn the compound slide if I want to drill with this one and in fact you can turn it to any angle that you want. I just found that it was a bit of a pain to keep resetting the compound slide so I had this other one anyway. I also have a, an indexing feature built into this lathe which I'll show you. 
and this allows me to index work around at any number of divisions or at least a, a set number of divisions and I can drill holes uh, either radially across the material or axially along the, the axis of the centre line of the lathe. So I'll, I'll show you the indexing feature because it's quite neat. So what I have here is a collar which I've just simply clamped to the, uh, the spindle of my lathe. The, there are two sets of, or two rows of holes. Uh, the outer row are 40 holes and the inner row 36 holes. With that I can get nearly all the divisions that I'd ever want to use. So I can get 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, uh, 10, 20. I can get all those divisions just using this simple set of uh, holes. You can make special one-off discs if you want to get some sort of weird number like a, a prime number. It's just a matter of uh, drilling the appropriate row of holes and I have got a, an indexing head so I can do that. Um, I've never found a need on the lathe. It's usually a case if you want to drill six holes or four holes in a cover plate uh, or maybe two or three holes across a, a piece of material on the diameter and this does it. The actual assembly to lock the spindle in that place is just a simple plunger and that just simply rotates and up into position. I've got this set so that it's a spring-loaded plunger and it can be turned and it will drop into the hole and lock the spindle. So that's now locked. Obviously it's really important that you uh, lock out your electric motor on your lathe when you're doing this. Um, I've never <laughs> always wondered what would happen if you turn it on. I'm guessing this would just bend or break or something. But um, yeah, a bit scary. You don't want to go there. So I just keep the Allen key for this on a little um, magnet on the end of the headstock so I can find it quickly. And it just falls down out of, out of the way and can stay there permanently. And you know, for most work that I do, this allows me to do my cross drilling or, or drilling in the lathe and it means you don't have to take the work out of the chuck and take it to another operation and it at least allows you some sort of accuracy in the setup. Okay, so the, the cross drilling process is pretty straightforward. I don't bother to lock the spindle when I'm doing this. Uh, I want to be able to get fairly close to the chuck. So I've just got a center drill set up in there now. Everything's locked down with the electric drill. And it's just a matter of center drilling and then follow up with the drill sides that you want to use. Okay, so I'm just going to face off uh, the end of this material now until we're back halfway through that drill cross hole and that'll form the groove for the electrode. Okay, that's good. So I'm just going to take this out now and clean up that groove, just get rid of the burrs and then we'll cut it the length.
Okay, so I've got this servo electrode in here now. This, this is the bigger set with the 5mm groove across the face. And what I've got here is some 6mm cold roll steel rod. And we'll just get that set up. I haven't tried this before, so it could be a disaster. I'm going to try this on about 1.5 seconds. Right, here we go. Alright, seems to work. Yep. Okay, can break it. Let's just try it a bit longer. Try it two seconds. That wasn't two seconds. Okay, try it two seconds. It does break, but you know what, it's not bad. The other thing you can do is you can swap out this top electrode for the smaller one and have got welding two different diameters together. So I'll just try that. We'll try some three millimeter to six. Ah, oh, man, that's hot. All right, I'm thinking, say, one point five seconds. No, one point two. That's better. That's what you want to see. So, I'm happy with that. That actually worked much better than I thought it would. So, if you want to ward off vampires, you can make as many of these highly durable crosses as you wanted to. Uh, what I'll do in the next video, we'll have a go at doing these cranked electrodes and see how they go. But for now, thanks for watching.